Hey everybody, welcome to Game 5 here with Battle of Bunker Hill Invitational. I am Beta Bish, and with me today I have... Discussions. And we are about to come at you with the Junior Roller Derby game, Philly Roller Derby versus Rochester Area Juniors. Start out playing in white today. We have four Rochester, zero, zero, Morningstar, one, Green Eggs and Slam, one zero zero one bully eilish one one casper two zero hex two two helen killer two four hell's a coming three one four wee beastie three one nine thorns four 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 jugs mcgee and eight abysmal and skating in blue for philly roller derby juniors we've got number one zero tenacious k Number 124, Strawberry Shortquick. Number 18, Baby Slayer. Number 22, Rat. Number 23, Squid. Number 33, Casserole. Number 360, Translucent. Number 404, Jack in the Box. Number 505, Jocelyn Moon. Number 55, Rainbow Crash. Number 56, Catastrophe. And number 58, Onyx. Number 612, Gemini. Number 666, Deathcap. And number 7, Indigo. For officials, we have Veronica Scars, Corporal Chaos, Texas, Mad Goose, Goblin Babe, WEB Destroys, Spicy Boy, Sarina, Sin, French Quarter, Guinness, Skull Dragger, Dorothy Gale Force, Go Go, Lady Macbeth, Twisted Throttle, and Cupcake Battering. Yep, looks like we're just doing some final gear checks up on the line. Our officials getting ready for Derby. This is the second JRDA sanctioned game here at the Battle of Bunker Hill 2024 Invitational. We've seen some incredible play. These, a lot of these skaters that we're about to see were here at 9 a.m. this morning, absolutely putting all of it out on the track. And I'm sure they're ready to do it here again just eight hours later. Am I doing my math correctly? Eight hours later. That is quite the day here in Dover, New Hampshire. I believe this is actually Rochester's first game of the day. Uh, Philly was the one that played earlier against the Skatriots. Yep. In that game, a lot of really incredible play. Really wonderful derby to watch all weekend. Dover, uh, Casco Bay doing an incredible job putting on this tournament for us this weekend. Lots of things to check out, including our food trucks. We've got a Stone Fire Pizza food truck and a shaved ice food truck out there for our folks in the house who still want to go get some stuff right out that bay door in the back. Go check out our food trucks. We've also got a vendor village if you want to check, if you want to check that out. All our leagues are bringing merch. They're located in the back of the rink behind the seating area. Casco Bay has a merch table and that's where you can find merchandise for this tournament weekend. Pick up a Battle of Bunker Hill t-shirt, pick up a Casco Bay duffel bag, and they're offering vinyl and heat pressing services so you can have your name and number custom printed and placed onto a merch item of your choice. I didn't know they had duffel bags. That's exciting. It was a very nice duffel bag, actually, that Casco Bay had. Ooh. It's like we are under a minute to derby. All of the gear safety checks have been completed, or as I like to call it, the ritualistic head, shoulders, knees, and toes of juniors. Knees and derby. toes. Knees and toes. Yep. Battle of Bunker Hill is brought to you by 
Saco Day Physical Therapy. They're over there in the Vendor Village. April is Occupational Therapy Month. Occupational therapists and occupational therapy assistants help transform society by not only restoring and improving pun function in people's lives, but bringing possibilities to life. Our team is proud to empower everyday living. Be sure to check out Sacco Bay Physical Therapy over in Vendor Village. Let's look at a quick shout out to our penalty box sponsor, Crash Course. Crash Course helps busy roller derby athletes increase strength, conquer self-doubt, and create the habits of high performers to become all-stars and MVPs on the track and in life. Gators headed to the track. It looks like we're going to be starting out with Abysmal and Tenacious K on the Centrist Digital Jammer line. And both jammers right into a wall of defenders. Again, some great defense from Philly earlier in the day, I'm expecting to see more of that today again as well. Abysmal sent to the crash course penalty box. That's going to put Tanisha K on a power jam right out of the start. Lead is still open though. Tanisha K finding a Rochester tripod. Again, Tanisha K skated in a game at 9 a.m. today, but that is not going to stop Tenacious K from grabbing lead. Tenacious K cleared their initial and is going to come back around for points. Abysmal out of the box is going to try for their initial. Oh! Big jump and hit on the inside. Tenacious K going for an apex jump. And a big round of applause for Tenacious K, able to leave the track under their own power. Again, a big thank you to Dover Fire Rescue helping us here this weekend as our medics and EMTs keeping us safe throughout the day. Everyone happy to see Tenacious K able to skate off on their own. And that's going to bring us out of this injury timeout and set up for the next jam. And Tenacious K took a big hit. Tenacious K almost got back up and kept sk skating for that jam. Oh, I and I think some of the concerned looks on the jam ref's face is what convinced her to stay down. That I'm, one hurt me. Yeah, that was, that was the hit, if I've ever seen one. Still just going to stay in an official timeout for a bit while we confirm the scores from the previous jam following some of that action. Again, you know, that was a massive jump on the inside from Tenacious K that came to a crashing halt as the Ro Rochester blocker came on the inside and stopped that attempt. And looks like we are ready to go for our next jam. Jamming for Philly, we have 2-2 two -two wrecked. And for Rochester, also 2-2, two -two, Helen Killer. The battle of the 22s. Both jammers coming up against the 
defense here from these blockers. And Wrecked taking lead jammer status, fighting through the tripod at the front there. Filling now down two blockers on the track. And Helen Killer also to the pack now. Both jammers LD is for Wrecked picking up four points there. And Helen Killer with a nice little hop on the outs or inside there. Picking up four as well for Rochester. Rex sliding through on the knee. Back up though. Helen Killer getting cycled back. And finding a way on the outside through for four points for Rochester. Wrecked powering through there. Taking up another four. Both teams now at full strength, all four blockers on the track. Ooh, bit of a tumble down the inside with two of the Philly blockers and Helen Killer. Everyone is back up and good to go though. Wrecked meanwhile picking up four more points. Wreck finding that lane on the outside, slipping right on by. And Helen through again, picking up four more points for Rochester. Ooh, Wreck taking a bit of a tumble there on the outside. Right back up though, cycled back. Right, it looks like number 444, Judge McGee. Helen making another pass there, picking up another four for Rochester. That is the end of that jam. The score following that jam is Philly 20, Rochester 16. Big scores there for both teams. Yeah, a 24 point jam there out of wrecked from Philly. To really the first scoring jam of the game. Huge numbers out on this track. Casper and Deathcap out on the track this time, trying to put some points up themselves. And it's gonna be Casper coming out as lead for Rochester. Deathcap still stuck in the pack on their initial. Meanwhile, Gemini back on the track and out of the box. Hex also on the track. That has emptied the box, but Deathcap picked up a penalty and is headed into the box themselves. That was a track cut on Deathcap. That's putting Casper on a power jam with lead, taking a little bit of a whip from their teammate. Puts four points up on the board. Casper's coming around to set up for their second scoring trip. Getting some offense from the Rochester defenders. Rochester's blockers with that offense allows Casper to clear on the inside, pick up another four. That's up to eight. And they call off the jam as Death Cap enters the track again. So we're gonna start with 10 skaters on the next jam. Not the before the Casper was able to pick up eight points for that jam, taking us to a tie game, 24 all. And lining up now for Rochester, we have eight abysmal, and for Philly, three six zero translucent. Both jammers are trying to find a way through these walls. Both very sturdy walls here. Philly's wall cycling around the Rochester wall and translucent through the pack, taking lead and jammer status. Abysmal is still fighting against the Philly wall. Ooh, translucent with a nice little hop there. Uh, appears that they were out of bounds, cycled back. Oh, but it looks like Translucent has the power jam. It appears we have a track cut from Abysmal. Oh, we now have a blocker each.
from both Rochester and Philly. And translucent picking up four more points there. Abysmal hitting the pack here. We're gonna get through. Oh, one blocker to beat. And Abysmal is through, eligible to score. Both jammers coming up this pack here. Ooh, Abysmal finding that outside lane. Picking up four there for Rochester. Translucent taking a bit of a hit there. Back up now. Ooh, knocked to the out there. Cycled back, meanwhile. Abysmal picking up four more points. Ooh, Translucent taking another fall to the inside and calling off that jam. Waiting for our final scores here. Here's we have 10 points picked up in that jam by Philly, bringing our score to 34 Philly, eight points for Rochester, 32 points. Yeah, Abysmal reported to the box that last jam. Ref came back over to the crash course penalty box and pulled them out, seeming uh, like they did not need to sit for that penalty or it was a shorter penalty, I'm not sure. But they came back out on the track, made up for lost time, put eight points up. Philly only has a lead of two after that last jam, so excellent recovery there by Abysmal and Rochester area junior roller derby. Out on the track now, we've got Wrecked up against Wee Beastie. And it's going to be Wrecked that grabs lead for Philadelphia. But Wee Beastie coming up right behind them. Both jammers hitting the pack. And Wee Beastie's the one able to clear on the outside. Oh, but picks up a little bit of a toe stop catch from Philadelphia. Wee Beastie through for four and around on their second scoring trip. Wrecked has made it through and put up four. Wee Beastie a lap ahead. But Wrecked is now on the same scoring trip. Rochester doing a good job preventing Wrecked to take the inside line though. Knocked Wrecked out and recycled them. Wee Beastie now third scoring trip. Wrecked on their second. Wrecked is through. Both jammers now on their third scoring pass. Wee Beastie, though, taking the opportunity for Wreck to come in to use that as a little bit of a distraction and make it through on the out. Wreck being held back by Helen Killer there. Big hit on the out and recycling Rex. That's given Wee Beastie time to come back around on their fourth scoring trip. And there Wee Beastie goes through again. Helen Killer just absolutely trying to stop wreck with everything they have that jam runs the time wrecked able to pick up four points on that last pass we beastie though putting up 16 total to rex 12 that's going to give us oh no sorry 20 total to rex 12 that gives us a lead change rochester area junior roller derby 52 billy roller derby juniors 46. And coming up now to jam, we have one Green Eggs and Slam for Rochester and 666 Death Cap for Philly. Neither jammer through the pack just yet. Oh, and we have Green Eggs and Slam taking lead jammer for Rochester. Death Cap hot on their heels though. Both jammers hitting the pack. Oh! Deathcap finding that outside lane, slipping on by. Green Eggs and Slam, meanwhile, stuck behind the Philly blockers currently. Uh-oh. Deathcap set to the penalty box for a track cut, so Green Eggs and Slam has the power jam. Rochester blockers trying to help their jammer out now. 
And Green Eggs and Slam is through. Calls off the jam. Waiting on final score here. But it looks like uh, both jammers were able to pick up, I believe, four points, bringing our score to Philly 50 to Rochester 56. Yeah, and often the unsung heroes of roller derby tournaments. Big shout out to our track crew. <laughs> A little bit of some track calamity there as the jam was just starting. It's often the action you don't see on camera, but our track crew just last minute absolutely making a save to keep Derby playing with a pair of scissors and some tape. They work some magic. But Abysmal back out on the track. Deathcap started the jam in the box. Abysmal was able to clear their first scoring, their first trip, their initial, and is now on the scoring trip. Deathcap absolutely running out of the box is still in their initial. Oh, oh man. Abysmal working for every single pass on that trip. And they grab all four. Star pass, though, on the Philly side to Strawberry Shortquake. Strawberry Shortquake has cleared their initial and is now three for points. Abysmal, though, on their second scoring trip. Strawberry Shortquake on their first. Abysmal though, able to clear the outside and Rochester doing a good job holding off Strawberry Shortquake. Abysmal is gonna come around and set up for a third trip. Strawberry Shortquake still on their first scoring trip. Oh, a nice little side, side swipe on the outside there from Abysmal. For, that was good for a third trip, up to 12 points. Strawberry Shortquake. Quake putting up four that time, but Rochester up to 68, Philly 54. Coming up now to jam, we have once again for Philly 2-2, two -two, right? And for Rochester, 4-4-4, four -four -four, Judds McGee. Both jammers hitting the pack here. Really condensed pack. Oh, bit of a tumble there with some of the blockers. None of the jammers through just yet. And Rex makes it through. Just barely in the lead. Takes it lead jammer. Oh, bit of a slip there from McGee. Rex coming up against the Rochester wall here. few tumbles here and there, but everyone seems to be fine. Back up, Rec making that first scoring pass. Oh! oh. They seem to have lost their balance on that outside line. Back up now, fighting against the last of the Rochester blockers at the front there. Making that scoring pass, picking up four points. McGee here at the Front, still fighting the Philly wall. It looks like we have a track cut for Rochester, so now Philly has the power jam. Rex picking up four more points there. Rochester's pivot getting it back on the track now. Looking to reform with teammates to try and help them out. Wrecked coming up here. Ready to, oh, make another scoring pass. Falls over right at the outside line. Cycle back. Dodging hits left and right. And that is the end of our jam. Looks like Rector was able to pick up three more points there at the end. And we had four points picked up for Rochester, bringing our score to Philly 65, Rochester 72. Yeah, Rochester doing a great job cycling ahead of the Philly Jammers and making sure to always stay in front, really showing some excellent track awareness out there. And that's 
what's been enabling them to screech ahead in this first period. Translucent and Abysmal out on the track this time. Both of these jammers we've seen do some great work today, but Abysmal, again, just like a few jams ago, has picked up lead and is coming around for more, but this time, Translucent is going to challenge them. Abysmal in for a scoring trip, Translucent on their way in for theirs. Both jammers in the pack on their first scoring trip. Nope, now Abysmal has cleared for four. Translucent making it through, absolutely working for those four. Abysmal about half the track ahead of Translucent, absolutely dodging Philadelphia blockers. And Abysmal opting to call it before Translucent can clear all the way. Translucent does pick up one point, but that makes that an 8-5 jam for Rochester. And just 10 points separate these two teams headed into jam number 10. Coming up now for our next jam, we have 5-5 five, five, Rainbow Crash and 2-2 two, two, Helen Killer. That is our whistle. Both jammers now off, looking to find their way around these walls. And we have Rainbow Crash with lead jammer status for Philly. Helen Killer cycled back here. Still trying to make that initial pass. And Helen Killer is through and now eligible to score. Oh, Rainbow Crash almost out of the pack, going just over the line, now cycled back. Helen knocked out there by Deathcap, cycled back as well. Both Jammers looking to make their first scoring pass. These blockers are really making these jammers work for it, it seems. And Rainbow Crash is through, picking up four. Helen Killer knocked the outside up here in turn one. Still looking to pick up some points here for Rochester. Meanwhile, Rainbow Crash making that second scoring pass now. We have Helen Killer through, picking up four for Rochester. Rainbow Crash fighting against this Rochester wall. Now up against a tripod at the front. Ooh, taking a bit of a tumble there. Getting back up though. Fighting this tripod at the front. And Helen Killer. Took the star off and has passed the star. Looks like two one zero zero one Bully Eilish. And that is the end of that jam. And for final points, it looks like we have eight points for Philly, four for Rochester, bringing our score to 78 to 84. And we have a official timeout, I believe. Yeah, in that last jam, uh, last jam, Helen Killer absolutely is just screaming for their pivot. They need, they were ready to pass that star, but unfortunately, pivot stuck at the front in a tripod, holding off Philly's jammer, and there's not a whole lot they were able to do until Helen Keller was able to get forward and get the star in their hand. Still in a little bit of an OTO right now, just as we make a couple of adjustments to the game clock. Our NSO's confirming game time with the scoreboard. Does look like we're all corrected, so I believe we'll be shart starting shortly. Starting shortly. So that five times fast. Nope, <laughs> not on microphone. We're, going, we're not gonna do that. <laughs>
headed into jam number 11. On the line, we have Squid up against Casper. And Casper finding the inside line for Raleigh. Picks up a track cut though. Must have just skated over the inside line. So it's Squid that is lead jammer for Philadelphia. Casper headed to the box and Squid is on a power jam. Squid on their first scoring trip. Clears the pack, but is met again by Green Eggs and Slam. Gets knocked out, but Green Eggs and Slam not staying up. So Squid is going to be allowed to clear. Picks up three points that jam or that uh, that trip. Not going to pick up the points for Green Eggs and Slam, but is going to continue through. F season inside line tries to take it. Gets knocked out there that time by Hell's a Coming. Meanwhile. Casper back on the track. Casper still needs to complete an initial trip to be able to score points. McGee, though, for Raleigh, headed to the box. That's one less blocker that Squid is going to have to make it pass to complete this trip. The crowd chanting Squid's name. Oh, Squid met by Green Eggs and Slam again. Absolutely denies Green Eggs and Slam and is clear on this trip. Casper, though, has cleared their initial. A bit of, a bit of confusion on the track. So that was just a bit of an interesting uh, moment. Squid skated off the track to the bench. The other teams prepping, the, the other uh, packs prepping to go out saw jam, Squid exit the track and assumed the jam was over. Meanwhile, in turn three, just full derby action still happening over there. I'm just so confused. <laughs> and then another 10 skaters entered the track. There's, there's too many cooks in the kitchen here. There Why do we have three stars on the track? Yeah, we had we had 10 skaters lined up between the pivot and jam lines, and then we had another 10 over in turn three. Obviously, the uh, center of the track all looking at turn three didn't notice that anyone had entered the track until they came around and, and, and turn four, and then all of a sudden, it was very hard to determine where the pack was. So yeah, our, our officials just taking an OTO to clean up after a little bit of that confusion here on the track. Currently, as the points stand, that was a seven to four jam for Philadelphia. If that does stay at the end, that would mean a lead change for Philly. Take this time while the officials get everything straightened out to remind everyone that if you are in-house, there's some awesome merch booths. All of the leagues have brought merch, and they are located in the vendor row at the back of the venue. Go check them out. And if you buy any merch that you want your name on, there is a vinyl and heat pressing. You can add your name and or your number to your Battle of Bunker Hill merch for some custom goodness. If your name or number is peeling off your jersey, they can help. All proceeds and benefit Casco Bay Roller Derby. like our trusty track ninjas are fixing some taping up there. 
Yeah, Dover Ice Arena we, is a recently melted ice rink. So yep. lots of fun out here on the track today for the track crew. Spoke, speaking to some of our friends earlier, they said it is very sticky. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've heard very, that very sticky, sir. It's very sticky, except for one spot in turn one that's very slick. <laughs> oh, perfect. That's always what you love to hear. Yes. Okay, and it does look like there is a minor points adjustment coming out of that. And we are returning. That was going to be a 7-3 jam, though. Still a lead change in Philadelphia's favor. Philly 85, Rochester at E3, headed into jam 12. And for jam 12, we have 505, Jocelyn Moon for Philly, and 8, Abysmal for Rochester. And Abysmal finding that outside line, taking Lee Jammer status for Rochester. Meanwhile, Jocelyn taking a hit to the outside, also now out of the pack though, eligible to score. Rochester's losing one skater to the box, gaining another back though. Both teams with three blockers on the track currently. Abysmal looking to make that second scoring pass, picking up four more points for Rochester. Jocelyn coming up for a second scoring pass for Philly. Trying to maintain that lead change. And Jocelyn making it through. Meanwhile, Abysmal right behind Jocelyn, picking up four more points, bringing Rochester's score for this jam to 12. Jocelyn coming up against the pack. Oh, and it looks like Jocelyn going to the penalty box. And now Abysmal has the power jam for Rochester. Looks like Jocelyn had a back block. Rochester looking to take back that lead with this power jam. And Abysmal, ooh, taking a hit but staying upright there. Still in bounds and making it through to pick up four more and calling off that jam. Calling that jam, Rochester picked up 20 points, Philly picked up 10. So it brings our score to Philly 95, Rochester 103. And another lead change as Rochester heads over the century mark going into jam number 13. You love to see it. Going into jam 13, Jocelyn Moon going to start in the penalty box. So that's putting green eggs and slam on a power start for Rochester. Rochester is a blocker down in the crash course penalty box. Oh, white uh, jam being called off and they are being issued a delay of game penalty for having too many j skaters on the track. They fielded four blockers while a blocker was in the box. So they're gonna reset up here. This time though, Jocelyn Moon was able to exit the box so now this is a two jammer start. So green eggs and slam not getting that advantage this time. Jocelyn Moon able to come out as lead and has cleared their initial and is now here for points. Green eggs and slam still caught in their initial. Jocelyn Moon through their first scoring trip. That's good for four points. Rochester going a blocker down into the crash course penalty box again. Jocelyn Moon, Owen is gonna have to sit for two. Jocelyn Moon, 
through for another four points. That's up to eight. That brings us to a tie game right now. We'll see how the rest of the jam goes. Green Eggs and Slam still trying to make their way through the Philly blockers. Jocelyn Moon, meanwhile, able to skate by on the outside. There's a little bit of confusion. Jocelyn Moon up to 12 points now. That's another lead change in Philly's direction this time. Philly goes a blocker down. Now it is an even matchup on the track. Both teams have a blocker in the crash course penalty box. Green Eggs and Slam able to clear their initial and is finally able to make it around and take their first scoring trip. Jocelyn Moon is on their fourth scoring trip. Green Eggs and Slam just skates through the inside. Green Eggs and Slam puts four points up on the board for Rochester. Jocelyn Moon stuck on this fourth trip. And Jocelyn Moon headed to the penalty box now. Jocelyn Moon was lead, so this jam's gonna run to time. Green Eggs and Slam able to clear again putting another four points up on the board. And that jam does run the time. Here's we had a bit of confusion. Jocelyn went to the penalty box, but did not have to. Refs were calling Jocelyn back at the end of that jam. Appears we now have a, another official timeout. But now Rochester with the lead at 111 to Phillies 107. Yeah, our jam refs have approached the bench to confirm who gained points. If Jocelyn Moon did not actually pick up that penalty, they may be eligible for additional points on that trip. We'll wait to see what our scoreboard looks like here in just a minute after this OTO completes. There's always a lot of confusion when you're on the track. Everyone's yelling. You have the crowd yelling, refs, and you're like, is that my number? Did they call my number? <laughs> they might have numbers. called my number. Lots of numbers, lots of good. What color am I today? Yeah. Sometimes it's better safe than sorry, because you don't want to, like, not go and then get another penalty. I'm wearing blue. I'm wearing blue. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I do also want to give a shout-out, because our... Uh, Friends in house can see it, but our friends on stream probably can't see it super well. Some of these skaters have really cool belt makeup, and I am here for it. If I'm being honest, I'm looking at numbers too much. I didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a 14-8 jam in favor of Philly, but that was a lead change both directions during the jam. Rochester retains the lead, 111 to 109. And coming up now for Philly, we have 2-2. Two -two. Rex, who makes it out of the pack, takes the jammer status. Jamming against number eight, Abysmal, through Rochester. Ooh, Abysmal hit out, cycled back there. Still trying to make that initial pass. Rex looking to complete that first scoring pass for Philly. And Abysmal completing that initial pass. Rex picking up four. Both teams now back at full strength with Translucent back on the track. Abysmal getting hit to the inside and cycled back by the Philly blockers. Meanwhile, wrecked at the front fighting against Rochester's last blocker here. And wrecked picking up four more. Abysmal getting cycled back once more. Knocked Hootie out there. Oh, oh. Fighting back on through. Well, Wreck taking quite a hit there to the outside and cycled back by Wee Beastie. Wreck coming up against the Rochester wall here. I think it's a pretty sturdy tripod here. Bismol now making that first scoring pass, picking up four points for Rochester. Wreck hits the end, cycled back a little bit there. Abysmal finding that outside line. Oh, nice feet right there. Keeping just inbounds, picking up four more for Rochester. And wrecked, calling off the jam there. 
you know, we saw this earlier in the game, but Abysmal doing a great job recovering from Philly's early lead. Philly did put 10 points up on the board, but Abysmal was able to come at, back at the end of the jam and put eight up. That has taken us to a tie at 119, and we're likely going to see one more jam out of this half. On the line, Onyx and Casper. Oh, and Onyx just barely clearing the outside, but is getting recycled. Lead is still open. And it's Casper has cleared, has appeared to clear their initial. And the jam ref is now pointing at Casper, indicating lead and putting four, four fingers up. That's good for four points. So Casper has appeared to have gained lead status, picked up four points, and is very happy about it coming into turn three and hitting the pack. Star pass to Squid on the Philly side. Squid is through for four. Casper up to eight and calls the jam. We'll see what our final score is. here is after we clear. The jam refs have fingers up. I do believe that's an eight six jam in Rochester's favor, taking us into the half. Rochester 127, Philadelphia 125. Really good final jam there. Smart of uh, our jammer for Rochester to wait until the penalty box was cleared so there are no penalties worried about going into the half. That, yeah, that way they can start with a clean slate and an empty crash course penalty box. They do need to be careful, though. Both teams making plen plenty of friends in the penalty box of this half. Looking at 48, uh, can I do math? No, 38 penalties total. Lots of skaters with four penalties right now headed into the half. They're going to need to be careful as we go into the second period. Yes, they will. But uh, with that, we will be back in about just under 14 minutes for our second half here with Game 5 at Battle of Bunker Hill. When there, you guys done?
and welcome back to game five here at Battle of Bunker Hill. We currently have both Rochester and Philly Juniors going through their safety checks before the start of the half. Going into this half, we have just a two-point lead for Rochester. Scores are Philly 125 to Rochester 127. It's been a very close game. Yeah, we've had enough lead changes in this game to make Norm from Cheers flush. I mean, it has been just an absolute nail-biter the whole way around. And speaking of, the teams need to, I think, reel it back just a little bit because there's a lot of penalties going up on that whiteboard. Lots of skaters with four penalties going into the second half that need to be worried. We need to look at our NSOs and go, Goose Faba, do <laughs> not foul. No. That's the last thing you want to do is foul out. And you know why you don't want to do that, right? Paperwork. So much paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you my mom will comment. <laughs> Hi, Pinky's mom. <laughs> and that is the whistle blow to start our half. Both teams lining up now. We have for Rochester 314, Wee Beastie, and for Philly 666, Death Cap. Oh, oh, and a hit to Death Cab from Wee Beastie right off the line. What a way to start a half. Gotta love some good jammer on jammer action. And Wee Beastie slipping by on the outside there, picking up lead jammer status for Rochester. Meanwhile, Death Cap cycled back here by Abysmal. Death Cap stashing the star here. We Beastie picking up four. Oh, actually, we Beastie picking up a penalty there. Here's we have a track cut. Now we have a power jam with the star pass to Casserole. And picking up four there for Philly. Casserole looking to uh, score big here on this power jam. Coming up against the pack once more. A little bit of offense from the Philly blockers. Casserole just one to beat. Oh, Rochester recycling, but Casserole slipping right on by. Picking four more. We BC back on the track. Picking up, looks like four as well. One of the Philly blockers in the box. Ooh, we beastie powering through, taking a bit of a flop right back up, picking up four more. Meanwhile, Casserole back here, looking to complete a third scoring pass. And Casserole picking up four more. We Beastie cycled back by the Philly Walkers. And one to beat, and that is the end of our jam. Philly is able to pick up. It's like 12 there. Rochester picking up the lead. Eight. Waiting for that to be confirmed. No, 11. Rochester just barely staying in the lead here with 138 to Phillies 137. Heading in jam number two, we have Wrecked up against Casper. Wrecked on the in, wrecked on the out, Casper on the in. Both jammers getting recycled. Casper near the rear of the track, wrecked out front. Both packs having to skate towards each other to reform. Both teams blockers providing some excellent defense. But Rochester goes a blocker down. That's gonna let Rex clear and pick up lead, but Casper is close behind him. 
both jammers coming into the pack for their first scoring pass. Rex pushes through, picks up four. Casper's getting recycled. Both teams have three blockers on the track. The crash course penalty box has a blocker from each team. Rex now through and on their second scoring trip. Casper, Casper's still stuck on their first. And Raleigh goes, or sorry, Rochester goes another blocker down. As Rekt comes around and is setting up for their third scoring trip. Casper still finding a wall of Philly blockers and unable to complete this first scoring trip. Rekt now on their fourth. Rochester trying to keep Rex back, but Rex makes quick work of it. Through on the outside this time. Sets up for a fifth scoring trip. Rochester clearing the box. Rex gonna have a little more opponents. Rex completed five scoring trips at Jam. Good for 20 points. Twenty points that jam for Philadelphia takes them up to 157 and a lead change to two points for Rochester. They are at 140. Looks like we had a late penalty at the end of that jam. And here is your morning star picking up the penalty. So Rochester is starting down one blocker. Jamming now for Rochester, we have 2-2 Helen Killer, and for Philly, taking lead jammer status just then, number 1-0, Tenacious K. Tenacious K back on the track after an injury in the first jam of the game. Obviously Great. did not stop her. She is back and reminding them that she is here to score big. Completed that first scoring pass. Helen Killer coming up on her first scoring pass now. Ooh, Tenacious K taking a bit of a fall there. Both jammers through the pack, picking up four points each. Helen Killer and Tenacious K both looking to the outside. Helen Killer getting hit out and cycled back by those Philly blockers. Ooh, taking a hit to the end there. Back up though. Philly now down one blocker. And Helen Killer making it through for that scoring pass. Tenacious K coming up on scoring pass number four for Philly. And Tenacious K calling off that jam. Like Kay was able to pick up four more points there, bringing our score to Philly 173, Rochester 148. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Philly starting to chip away and crawl ahead. Whatever they just talked about during the half seems to be working, and Rochester is going to have to adjust. Abysmal on the line with Death Cap. We saw this matchup plenty of times in the first half. Let's see what they can make of it here. Abysmal is the one to clear and grab lead. We saw Abysmal put up big points in the first half. I'm sure that is the goal this time around as well. Deathcap getting recycled and taking a second run in it. Meanwhile, Abysmal clear trip through the pack, up four points up on the board for Rochester. Deathcap clear their initial. Deathcap's gonna come around the score as well. And Abysmal through the middle for another four points up on the board. Deathcap now clear their first scoring trip. Both jammers making their way around. Abysmal one trip ahead of Deathcap. Abysmal hits, gets knocked out, and calls the jam before Deathcap can make it back. Abysmal picking up two passes, two points, before calling it off. That's up to 10. 10-4 ten jam for Abysmal and Rochester Area Junior Roller Derby. 158 Philly Roller Derby, 177. 
Coming up to jam now for Philly, we have 2-2 two -two wrecked. And for Rochester, 1-1 one -one at Casper. And both jammers hitting the pack quick here. Wrecked making it through, taking the lead. Jammer set is for Philly. Meanwhile, Casper held at the back here by a Philly tripod. Philly losing one member of that tripod to the penalty box. Not quite enough to get Casper out just yet. Meanwhile, Wrecked making that first scoring pass. And Casper now completing that initial pass, eligible to score. Wrecked coming up against the Philly wall here. Not the Philly wall, the Rochester wall. Taking a bit of a fall, but right back up. Only two blockers to beat. And Wrecked is through, picking up four more. Casper trying to beat these Philly blockers and is able to, picking up four more for Rochester. Wrecked slipping by on the out there, picking up another four for Philly. Casper now getting knocked to the in. Philly down a blocker, but still looking to slow Casper down. Oh, oh, quite a hit there to Rex on the out, cycled back. Rex shaking it off as uh, they re on the track. That was a big tumble there, but Rex is back up and good to go. Oh, Helen Killer is trying to take Rex out there, not able to. Rex is skating on by, picking up that four points. Looks like we had a star pass from Casper to McGee. And Rhett picking up four more. And that is the end of that jam. That's some uh, interesting thing going on with our scoreboard currently. Had an uh, official timeout while scoreboard gets fixed. And that was quite a jam for Rex there. And those hits, oh my! Yeah, one of them, uh, sort of somewhat self-induced, Rex going up on one skate to try to clear on the inside, went a bit head down, and then just. Like in a matter of you know half a second of making that move, kind of got knocked to the out, and that ended in quite the dramatic hit. But luckily, wrecked back on their feet and <laughs> physically just shaking it off. I've never seen that reaction, but I, that's what you sometimes see out of these juniors: just the absolute tenacity towards the game and able to get up and just keep powering through. We are in an OTO right now. Our officials just conferring over what the scoreboard is and what the buttons were hit to make what happen. We do have a large team of very talented officials, both on and off skates for the tournament. And that way, when technology fails us, we have they, them to rely they on. They actually know what's going on. That's never, always good. Yeah. We never trust the technology. No. We use it, but we always have a backup. It is a tool. It's a tool. And sometimes your tools break. Yep. <laughs> we'll uh, take this time to thank our Jammer Line sponsor, Centris Digital. Centris is an internet marketing agency that is focused on fostering your success. They put emphasis on maximizing marketing potential, elevating traffic reach, and increasing revenue. At Centris, our success is defined by your success, and we work relentlessly to provide marketing services based on collaboration and integrity. Visit them online at www.centris.digital. And for those of us 
out here and at the crowd here in the Dover Ice Arena. Be sure to join us at the after party that's taking place at the Brick Bar and Grill at 2 Orchard Street Drive. Orchard Street Drive. That's Orchard Street, Dover, New Hampshire. <laughs> it's about a mile down the road. They have an open bar, a, not an open bar, a full bar, and it will be open. But there will also be a food that's buffet style and it's first come, first serve for there's sliders, wings, tenders, french fries, chicken wraps, mm -hmm. and then regular and pulled pork mac and cheese, which is what mm -hmm. I am looking forward to personally. Say, that sounds delicious. You had me at mac and cheese. As we've mentioned, we also have Crash Course sponsoring our penalty box. They also have a booth over in our vendor village. Crash Course helps busy roller derby athletes increase strength, conquer self-doubt, and create the habits of high performers to become all-stars and MVPs on the track and in life. We'd love for you to join our community where we're constantly working to support each other, lift each other up, and in inspire each other to crush goals. You can join us on Facebook. The group name is Chrissy Crash, both with a K. And if you want free specific derby, specific workouts and athlete mindset tips, you can level up. You can find those on Instagram, same account handle. That's Chrissy Crash, both with Ks. Crash Course is life as a contact sport win. And it does look like our NSOs are just finishing wrangling all the ones and zeros to make sure that they align with what they're keeping track of on the field. And that means we're able to line up for jam number six here in the second period. Green Eggs and Slam on the line up against Tenacious K. Oh, Ooh. and Green Eggs and Slam clears their initial after a big hit on a Philly blocker. Green Eggs and Slam making easy work of that and is now back around on their first scoring trip. Meanwhile, Philly has passed the star to Translucent. Translucent continuing to get recycled and setting up again. Green Eggs and Slam up on their toe stop, trying to make their way around a Philly tripod, but Philly doing a good job to cycle around. Not good enough though, Green Eggs and Slam through for four points. Translucent still trying to clear their initial. Rochester not letting it happen, and here comes Green Eggs and Slam on their second scoring trip. And Tenacious K, now a blocker being sent to the penalty box. That allowed Green Eggs and Slam an opportunity to clear again, putting up four more points. That's up to eight. And here comes the third scoring trip. Translucent still trying to clear these Rochester blockers. Not letting it happen. Translucent trying to take the end this time. That was Wee Beastie knocking Translucent back again. Green Eggs and Slam puts another four points up. That pass up to 12. 12 point jam for Rochester and Green Eggs and Slam takes them up to 177 to Philly. Roller Derby, 197. 20 points separate the two teams going into jam number seven. Lots of sets. <laughs> going to this jam now, we have 1001 Bully Eilish and 666 a death cap. Meanwhile, Philly is down to just two blockers on the track. Those two blockers looking to keep Bully from getting through, but ah, Bully is able to slip on by and picks up lead jammer status for Rochester. Death cap, meanwhile, still working against the Rochester wall at the front. 
And Death Cab now through and eligible to score. Bully looking to make that initial scoring pass. Ooh. Death Cab pulling down and sliding on through right there. Back up though. Neither Jammer has completed a scoring pass just yet. Both still looking to. Death Cap knocked to the in. And we have a ooh, star pass for Philly. Star pass to 5-5 five five Rainbow Crash. Bully Eilish making that scoring pass now. Picking up for, for Rochester. Rainbow Crash coming up against the pack here. Ooh, bit of a tumble. Everyone looks to be getting back up though. And Rainbow Crash making it through. Picking up four for Philly. Ooh, what a hit there at the end. But ooh, I see Smilus. Looks like we are good to go. In the jet, that jam, Rochester picked up three more, bringing our score to Philly 203, Rochester 184. Rochester does appear to be clawing back some of that lead that Philly gained. Whatever they needed to adjust, it appears, has happened. And going into jam number eight, Abysmal is up against Wrecked. Both of these jammers putting some real punishment on the opposing team blockers previously in the game. I expect this to be quite the physical jam. Wrecked is out with lead. Abysmal getting recycled by Onyx and having to go at it again. That's given Wrecked time to come back, and they're on their first scoring trip with lead. Wreck tries the out, but meets a Rochester tripod. Meanwhile, Abysmal has cleared their initial, and Wrecked is cleared for four. Wrecked getting the signal from the bench to continue. Abysmal hits the Philly blocker and gets spun out to the outside. Wrecked Apex Ooh. jump on the inside, clears for four. That's up to eight for Wrecked and Philadelphia. Abysmal through for four on the Rochester side. Both jammers roughly the same place in the pack, but Philly is three, blo three blockers down. A blocker standing and two blockers sitting. That made an easy pass for Abysmal and Wrecked is stuck. Now Abysmal is back on the same scoring trip as Wrecked. Abysmal hammers into the pack as Wreck calls it off. It looks like Wreck picked up two points, but Abysmal able to pick up all four. Taking them up to 12. So that's a 12-10 jam for Rochester. Again, we've seen Abysmal do that time and time again. Come at the end of the jam and just absolutely make it up and somehow squeeze out more points than the other team. And jamming now, we have one Green A's and slam for Rochester, taking that quickly. Jammer status, meanwhile, number one zero, Tenacious K for Philly, now also out of the pack, eligible to score. Philly has regained another blocker, bringing up to three blockers on track. And they got their fourth blocker back just to lose one more. Ooh, K cutting through the pack real quick, picking up four points. Green Eggs and Slam making that first scoring pass still. Here's K coming up against the pack. Looking for a way through. Green Eggs and Slam barreling by that Philly blocker, picking up four for Rochester. And Tenacious K picking up another four. He makes a slam, looking to, ooh, pick up a couple points. Hopping just over the line there, it looks like. I'm calling off that jam. No more point, points scored on that final pass for either team, so it looks like our score will be Philly 221 to Rochester 200. Oh yeah, it's definitely out of black. 
And we are off again with 00, zero Morningstar for Rochester and 360 Translucent for Philly. Neither jammer through the pack just yet. Oh, bit of a tumble there. A few skaters down. Everyone back up and good to go, though. Oh, and it looks like Morningstar is going to the box. So it is a power jam for Translucent and Philly. If I remember correctly, that is also Morningstar's sixth penalty. I think it's seven. I believe, it, I believe it's seven. Ooh. You know what that means? Paperwork. Paperwork. Translucent making a scoring pass. Oh! Cute little hop there. Bit of a fall, though, but Translucent is right back up. Fortunately, Rochester's blockers were able to reform in front of Translucent, so now Translucent has to fight right back by them again. Ooh, Translucent struggling a bit against this wall up here. Philly's blockers looking to give Translucent a hand here. Translucent cycled back by Wee Beastie. Pack moving at a fairly decent pace right now. Trying to keep in front of Translucent. Translucent fighting up against, oh, taking another hit there to the outside. Abysmal going to the penalty box now. We beastie the one cycling Translucent back and that is the end of our jam. Four more points for Philly there. Here's that our score at the end of that jam is 225 Philly, 200 Rochester. Yeah, Philly Roller Derby able to maintain a little bit of a lead as we go through. 25 points separate Philadelphia and Rochester. The brief timeout. It's like an OTO. I they could do be. So. Yeah, they could be dealing with. Yep. Scoreboard still says. Or now says OTO. <laughs> yeah. So that was a that was a foul out by Morningstar there. Uh, at the end of that jam, so Morningstar is going to have to gear down and exit the track. That brings. That brings Rochester down to 10 skaters remaining. <laughs> they started with quite a few skaters down. And as you can see from the penalty whiteboard, we've got two other skaters with five penalties up on the whiteboard. This is ten minute, nine minutes remaining. People are going to need to be careful. They are in it, the danger zone for more paperwork. Yeah. yeah, nobody wants that. On the line, Rhett and Green Eggs and Slam. Abysmal is starting in the penalty box, so Green Eggs and Slam is one blocker down. And Green Eggs and Slam is going to opt to push through, and Rhett is going to try to dodge around. Both teams' blockers doing a good job holding it back, but it's Rhett that clears. And Rekt is picking up lead for Philly. Green Eggs and Slam continuing to get recycled. Rekt, meanwhile, on their first scoring trip while Green Eggs and Slam is trying to complete their initial. Teams traded blockers in the penalty box. The crash course penalty box currently occupied by a Philly blocker. It's like a fun game of tag. Tag, you're it. It's your turn. Yeah. Crash blocks. Course getting their full sponsorship amount out of this game in the penalty box. Rex pushing through Rochester blockers, picking up four points on that trip. Rex now through second scoring trip for Rex. Slam with a bit of a star stash. Green Edge and Slam has now cleared their initial trip. 
And that's a second Rochester blocker headed to the box, the, the crash course penalty box getting full again. Green Exit Slam is up against a full team of Philadelphia blockers. So that's going to put Wrecked on the advantage as they come around on their third scoring trip. Green Eggs and Slam going through the pack did not have the helmet cover on their head. They need that helmet cover on if they want any points for this trip. Wrecked through again. This is now going to be the fourth scoring trip for Wrecked. More blockers for Rochester trading places in the crash course penalty box. That jam, I believe, runs the time. Wrecked picking up another four points on that trip, taking them up to 16 to Rochester's two. A 14-point advantage in that jam. Philly roller derby 241, Rochester 202. A little bit of a penalty box uh, confusion situating the playing penalty box Jenga real quick over here the crash course penalty box yeah something following that jam there is a signal now there's four blockers in the box so full pen full crash course penalty box in blocker land Yeah, it looks like uh, we're going to have both teams starting down at two blockers. Yeah, like th this is looks like this is a team timeout on Rochester's side. The blockers in the box calling for some support from the coach. Coach Wise is saying, sit your penalty, come see me afterwards. You're not going to get another penalty for insubordination or a technical of some type. Let's just get through the penalty box. We've sat here enough. Yep. Let's get out of it. Just take your break. Coming up now to jam, we have 1-0 Tenacious K and 1-1 Casper. Both jammers coming up against these two walls and Tenacious K juking right on by Rochester's blockers, picking up lead jammer status. 1-1 Casper is still trying to make that initial pass. And Tenacious K slipping by and picking up four as Casper now making that initial pass. Tenacious K hitting the pack here. More of our blockers are back on the track. We are now only down one blocker for Rochester. Tenacious K hitting the Rochester wall here. Looks like both teams are now back at full strength on the track. And K completing that scoring pass, picking up four more. Casper cycled back. Looking to pick up another four. Meanwhile, Tenacious K making that fourth scoring pass now. At the front, only two blockers left to beat. And Tenacious K is through picking up four more. Casper, meanwhile, trying to complete that second scoring pass. Rochester now down one blocker. Both jammers fighting against these walls here. Tenacious K trying to get through on the inside. Oh, and it looks like Tenacious K picked up a track cut penalty there right at the end. So Rochester will start the next jam with a power jam, I believe.
All right, and for our friends in the house, if you wanted some wood-fired pizza, it is your last call to go see our friends at Stone and Fire Food Truck with the wood-fired pizza food truck. They are leaving at seven o'clock, so go check them out now. If you want some pizza, I recommend the rosemary apricot. It is phenomenal, and some hot honey. It is delicious. Out here in Jam 13, Hell's a Coming is the jammer for Rochester, and they have lead. Tenacious K has started this jam in the box. So Hell's a Coming, not only with lead, but with a power jam, puts up four points and is coming around on their second scoring trip. Hell's coming through again for another four. Tenacious K back on the track needs to complete an initial. Hell's a coming though. Ready for a third scoring trip here. Tenacious K coming around for their first. Hell's a coming, finds an inside line, picks up another four points up to 12. Tenacious K being held off by Rochester. And that jam goes. Three points picked up by Tenacious K on that trip. Okay. Rochester's jam ref signaling okay. four. I thought that was another trip. Perhaps not. So it looks like a 12-3 jam for Rochester, taking them up to 220 to Phillies 261. Coming up now to Jim, we have eight abysmal for Rochester and three, three, casserole for Philly. Casserole making it out and taking lead jammer status. Abysmal now also out of the pack, both jammers eligible to score. Philly's fourth blocker making it back onto the track. Oh, and losing a different blocker. Philly is still at three blockers. Meanwhile, Rochester also with three blockers. Abysmal picking up four there. Casserole now also with four. Rochester down two blockers right now. Abysmal getting knocked to the inside, cycled back. Yeah, that was Jocelyn Ooh. with a quick little hit out that recycled him. Yep, both jammers making it through there. Neat little moves to slip on by the pack before Casserole calls off the jam. Score following that jam is Philly 269, Rochester 228. It appears we have another timeout, official timeout. Looks like our IPR is having a quick discussion. Jam refs and our IPR reviewing what happened in that previous jam. Looking around, nothing immediately off as obvious as to the OTO. Our inside PLT NSOs, feverently looking at some iPads. Perhaps that's the source of the OTO. It does give us an opportunity to talk about our Jammer Line. Our Jammer Line is sponsored by Centris Digital. Centris is an internet marketing agency that's focused on focus fostering your success. They put emphasis on maximizing marketing potential, elevating traffic research, and increasing revenue. At Centris, our success is defined by your success, and we work relentlessly to provide marketing services based on collaboration and integrity. Visit them online at www.centris.digital. And jamming now, we have 666 Deathcap and 1001 Bully Eilish. Ooh, Deathcap slipping through, taking lead jammer status. Well, teams now at full strength, all blockers on the track. Bully Eilish still trying to make that initial scoring, or initial pass to be eligible to score. Meanwhile, Deathcap looking to pick up four. Cycle the back here. Both jammers struggling to get through this pack right now. Oh, just as I say that, Deathcap slips on by, picks up four. 
Willie Eilish still looking to make that initial pass, being held back by the Philly tripod there in the back. Cycled back. Ooh, what a hit to the inside there. The death cap right back up. These blockers really making these uh, jammers work for it right now. And death cap picking up four more. Both jammers coming up on the pack here. Bully Eilish looking to go to the out, getting tapped out lightly, cycled back. Wild death cap, cycled back by Wee Beastie. Oh, Billy Eilish taking a bit of a spin there, back up now. And death cap picking up another four. Bully Eilish now eligible to score for Rochester. Deathcap coming up on the pack here. Skating by on the out. Oh, almost hit and picks up four more at the very end there. That is the end of our game. We will wait for our officials who finalize our score. Yeah, and you have to love seeing every second played out to the very end of oh, the game yeah. with all intensity even though philly had the lead them absolutely going through and squeezing every point possible because it is that point differential at the end that matters towards rankings and yes, this is sanctioned play here at battle of bunker hill what awesome derby And final score, Philly Roller Derby, 285. Rochester Area Junior Roller Derby, 228. Philly taking home the win. We have one more game for today after this. It's Austin Anarchy versus Casco Bay Roller Derby. That is going to be quite the event. Be sure to check out Casco Bay and the Battle of Bunker Hill socials for that link to game six, because I can promise you, after seeing the play this weekend, you are not going to want to miss that game. Catch us back here at seven o'clock.